So the way I like to think about these three equations is that they're all related to the process of natural selection, um, evolution, and speciation. Those three concepts kind of bring these three together. And if you understand the role each of these um, mathematical formulae play in the measurement of those different ideas, it will make your life much easier, both in terms of um, understanding what these calculations tell you, as well as applying them to different types of questions that you might get in an exam. Okay, so let's just review the process of natural selection and, and then see where this all might apply. So remember, for any natural selection to occur, you need variation in your population. So remember, this is usually genetic variation, okay? And it, it relates to things like mutation that makes new animals. It also is related to the processes in meiosis, crossing over and independent assortments that generates new combinations of alleles, um, as well as uh, sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction that, again, it allows new combinations of alleles to occur. Okay, so we have variation in a population and if we have a selection pressure, if we have a selection pressure, it's going to cause some, <clears throat> some of these variations um, to, some of these variations allow uh, individuals to survive longer, to get to the age of reproduction, so that they can reproduce and pass on the alleles to uh, the next generation. So selection pressure, essentially, it causes some of these variations to turn into adaptations because they help the organism to survive the selection pressure. Okay, so adaptations, there's different types of adaptations. Remember, they might be behavioral, they may be anatomical, they may be physiological. Okay, but whatever it is, those adaptations are simply the outcome of particular advantageous alleles. Okay? We've got to keep our eye on that because that's going to become useful a bit later. So you've got your alleles for the adaptations. And because the survivors um, pass on, you know, because it's only the survivors, the ones who have the adaptations that survive and can reproduce in the most extreme case, because of that, this results in changes in allele frequency. Because obviously, if the, if the individuals with certain alleles are adapted, they survive longer, reproduce, it, it makes sense that in the population over time, the frequency of alleles for adaptations is going to increase, okay? And vice versa for any allele that um, does not give an advantage or even gives a disadvantage, okay? So, at this point, I'm running out of space. Um, so changes in allele frequency, the idea being, if this carries on for a very long time, it leads to a lot of genetic change. And if a lot of genetic change happens, um, we get speciation. Okay, so I'm kind of, you know, glossing over a whole load of detail here about isolation, about different selection pressures. That's not really the point of this video, it's just to kind of put things in context. But if we assume that um, organisms continue to adapt or they get isolated and they, they adapt to their different conditions, 
speciation can happen, and speciation leads to the generation of different types of species. And that means we are looking at essentially the definition of biodiversity, all the different species in a particular environment. So this is the kind of, this is how I think about this, okay? That variation gives us adaptations. Adaptation gives us evolution of, of, of organisms and evolution of organisms over a long time in different habitats and different conditions gives us speciation and speciation gives us all the different species of organisms. And this is the kind of way I like to think where these formulae fit in. How does how do these formulae fit in to the story? So when I think about variation, I think, well, how do you measure the variation in a population? How do you measure the genetic variation? Well, that's indicated to you by the number of heterozygote individuals in that population. The more heterozygote individuals you have in a population, the, the more indicative that there's different alleles in that population. So that's where the hetero, heterozygosity fits in. Heterozygosity index tells you, or is an indicator of, the variation, the genetic variation in a population is essentially telling you how ready this population is to, to survive a given selection pressure. Because the more variation it is, the higher that heterozygosity index, the more likely it is that it contains some combination of alleles or, or some alleles that will allow it to uh, survive the selection pressure and have the chance to become an adaptation. Okay, so that's the heterozygosity index. Next, we look at selection pressure, adaptations, and if this happens, if, ever, if se uh, natural selection is occurring, if it's happening, then that means that there should be changes in allele frequency. And if, how, how would we observe that? We would observe that by, by using the Hardy-Weinberg equation and seeing if actually, um, over a thousand years, does the frequency of a particular allele change. If the frequency of the allele goes up, it means that the allele is giving some advantage to that population, and therefore that's an allele for an adaptation. Okay, and vice versa. If the frequency of an allele is going down, it's probably giving that population some kind of disadvantage. So, Hardy-Weinberg equation tells you about the process of evolution occurring. Is there natural selection going on? Is allele frequency changing? Finally, then we have the biodiversity index, and you know, I wasn't subtle about it, but if, if we get speciation and we get lots of different species, that essentially is where the biodiversity index comes in. It's telling you about the number of individuals and the number of different species in a particular area, and that's where the index the biodiversity index comes in. So, kind of a little bit abstract way to look at things, but, you know, this, this narrative is what allows me to make sense of the different formulae, um, kind of bringing them together, uh, and that's, that kind of helps to make sense of things. So, hope this has been useful. Um,